Winning the Delano Polo Award is Matthias Taub in car number 10, driving for the Gessler team next year, as he is this year. So, uh, it appears that Gessler is actually willing to keep some continuity over there, instead of firing drivers, well, every year. There's a lot of teams that have a habit of doing that, and, uh, one of them is Volpe. Volpe has, uh, announced that their driving lineup next year will be Packer Carroll and Leonid Roderick for 2013. Roderick has been the top free agent, and that he's, and the fact that he's announced that he's going to be driving for Volpe means that they might actually be a force to contend with on a regular basis, because uh, at the present, Packer Carroll and Davina Henton, I think, are a bit too inexperienced to really uh, contend for wins uh, on a regular basis. Henton has, I think, done a better job than Carroll so far overall. Well, Henton's qualified for every race, so I think that goes without question. But Carroll has a win, whereas Henton doesn't, and... Uh, I think the reason Henton's leaving could be down to the fact that Lynx, a sponsor, has actually bought out Majestic Motorsports for next season, and I would be very surprised if Henton wasn't driving over there as a full-time driver. We have no idea who the second driver over at the Lynx team will be, but uh, I have it on good authority that uh, it will not be either Ryan Matthews or Mika Parsonen, so uh, unfortunately those two guys are probably going to be looking for a drive somewhere else. So, uh, that's uh, a bit of a travesty, really. Anyways, Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance, and all Gessler front row as Matthias Taub and Arto Kakinen lead the field into turn one, and now into two as Taub and Kakinen duel for position here. Adrian Devereaux coming through. Taub gets a little close to his teammate. Arto goes a bit wide, though, and Adrian Devereaux's got a run on the championship leader. Arto Kakinen, the, that silver nine car, led the points coming in. And uh, Taub did not exactly uh, help Kekkonen out a good deal there in those first couple of corners. There you see Savaraldo having a run on Kekkonen. And that black car is Marcus Leonard, the uh, black umbrella car. Uh, Kekkonen, car number nine, trying to fend off Savaraldo, but I think Savaraldo's got the better run going around the outside there. Uh, Luciano will take over the spot. Now, uh, Arto Kekkonen, the uh, championship leader, is going to get challenged by Marcus Leonard, but uh, Gessler versus Zenos is really kind of... Uh, well, it's not really much of a fight there. Anyway, Cody Keaton is uh, back in the 42 car on a very short leash, apparently. He's lucky to actually keep his master license after finishing nine laps down at Victoria, believe it or not. He had enough common sense to lay back on the start, but uh, he's lost the rest of the field already. He's not even close to the, uh, the car in 35th place. Not really a surprise. He was well off the pace in all the practice sessions, and I saw his car in the gravel more than the pavement. Uh, seemingly. Anyway, Packer Carroll in car number two was also spending a good deal of time in the gravel in qualifying as he chopped off Kevin Dwyer for really no good reason and as a result uh, he did not get a very good uh, time in. So I think Packer Carroll is, should be kicking himself because I think passing on this track is going to be a little difficult and um, to qualify back in the midfield is certainly going to hamper his race. He's in a really fast car, and he shouldn't be back here with Blake Kamphausen and Ian Cooper in 16th place. He should probably, I think, be closer to the top 10. Uh, Davina Henton is in 9th, much to the chagrin of the rather loud and annoying Packer Carroll fan club. I think both the Volpe drivers have overall done a good job this season. However, I think Henton's just a little bit more dependable than Packer Carroll is. He seems to have some instances where he just throws it into the bushes way too often. However, Carroll does have that win to his name at Quebec, Albeit by default, after all of his competition, uh, sort of uh, managed to blow up or drop out of the race. Ben Atkins in 28th, is back in 20th place after he was penalized after his antics in Victoria and sent to the back of the grid. He needs to finish inside the top 10 to have a shot at winning the Independence Trophy, but uh, I don't see that happening. He's got a very uphill battle. Vitaly Karpinko and the Toliati are back. And they're in the back. They're running 33rd in front of the uh, fellow independent, Troy Adams, who's also sent to the back of the grid in the 91 car for this race after uh, being a bit of a nuisance under yellow back in Victoria. But the, but here's another car who was sent to the back of the field, Scott Stoidler, who's in the 08 car this week, the second power steering incorporated car. He was also sent to the back to that collision with Marcus Leonard, and taking over Stoidler's ride is Trevin Terrell, the African-American driver who drove for Tyrone Stanley's team and team lights a few years back. Here is Cody Keaton in the uh, 42 car, and if we're focusing on him, it can't be for anything good, and, well, okay. That's the third time uh, this weekend I've seen Keaton do that. Uh, whoa, he's sliding that car around a little bit. Uh, Cody Keaton, car number 42, having a pretty rough day so far. Uh, I don't think uh, he's going to be, uh, well, 
The adventures of Cody Keaton continue as we're still in the same lap. Um, he's hit another wall, so the handling is already gone on that Tutino. And granted, Tutino doesn't have the best handling car anyway, and that's what you need here at this track, but Keaton's just a nuisance at this point. Back at the pointy end of the field, we got a pretty good battle for the lead developing. Adrian Devereaux versus Matthias Taub on lap four. Devereaux in the number one Haas car is going to have a run on the number 10 car of Taub. Uh, not right now, looks like Devereaux just backing off a bit. Here he comes, Devereaux on the attack now. Taub sees him, gives him a little bit of space, but Devereaux's going to barge through, it looks like. But Taub, is Taub going to have enough space to fight back? Yes, he is. Taub fights back in the 10. Adrian Devereaux holding the lead uh, now. Oh, maybe not. Taub coming back out on their side by side as they come through the final couple of corners on the track. But Taub goes a bit wide, and Devereaux's going to have the better run here. They come to this long sweeping corner that leads onto the uh, long couple of sweeping corners that lead back onto the main straight. Adrian Devereaux, car number one, takes over the lead of the race on lap four. Marcus Leonard qualified very well in the Xenos, but he's already dropping back as that's Julian Asova in the uh, number eight Katsiv and Leonard Roderick in car four. They're all over him like a bad smell as uh, Leonard gets that car very out of shape. He did a great job in qualifying, but I think it's pretty obvious that car just is not handling very well so far in the race. Still with Marcus Leonard as he's about to lose a spot to Melanie Cleveno in that uh, white 74 car. She's uh, taking, uh, she's driving uh, that car for this race, but she won't be in that car for the next race in Brazil. We believe Bobby Porto will be in that car for the round of Brazil. Uh, Cleveno having a run on Leonard. And here we are with Kevin Dwyer. He's running in sixth on lap five. He's clearly upped his game ever since uh, Indy where he was fantastic and probably could have uh, won that race. However, uh, mechanical problems sideline Dwyer uh, there. And here he's having a fantastic run. He's had a pretty good weekend so far. He's been in the, he's regularly been in the top ten in all of the practice sessions. So I've been very very impressed with the uh, the level of improvement shown by Kevin Dwyer and Team Star USA. On lap six, Lewis Kingston pits for a puncture, and this is really going to hurt his race. Matthias Taub, however, is on the attack. He's trying to get the lead back from Adrian Devereaux. Here he comes. Devereaux gives him space. And Devereaux's not going to be an advantage coming through here. Taub uses a bit of runoff there, and he's got a run on the one car. Matthias Taub, car 10, Adrian Devereaux, car 1. They're really fighting for this as if it's the last lap. Devereaux on the attack again, but Taub is trying to hang on and trying to push Devereaux out a little bit wide here. Devereaux, number, car number 1, is falling back just a little bit, and I think Taub's got the lead. Yes, Matthias Taub's got the lead in car number 10. Fantastic bit of driving by both those guys, but I don't think Devereaux's gonna let him get away so fast. Here comes Devereaux in car number one. He's coming, he's gonna come flying in here. He's hard on the brakes. Devereaux looks like he's gonna get give uh, get the spot back here. You see Tau went out way wide because I think Tau thought that Devereaux was gonna come flying in, break too late, and crash into him. Uh, Devereaux got the lead though, and that was a great bit of driving by both those guys. We're on board Matthias Taub's car, looking off the back of his car at Luciano Savaral in that green number three car. Taub really pushing hard to get back to Devereaux, but now Savaral is coming on him. Oh, not quite contact there, almost. Savaral crossover. Luciano on the attack in that three car. This is great stuff early on in the race. Savaral trying to get by Taub, but Taub not letting him have it. Taub is going to make Savaral really work for it, which is what you're supposed to be doing, but Taub is really fighting to keep second right now. Savaral has got a run on Taub in that 10 car. Now he's going to come trying to get him. Uh, looks like he's going to try to get him in that hairpin corner. It's not really a hairpin, but it's the closest thing we have to one here. And oh, he had a run there, but he wasn't able to do anything with it because he went way too wide, and that gives Arto Kekkonen in the nine car, the championship leader, a run at third. And Kekkonen's going to take third place. Savaral left the door open, and now Sykes is going to come in in the 44 car. Michael Sykes smells blood, and he's going to try to get by the 33 car and take over fourth. Sykesy is on the attack. The Welshman, the 44-year-old Welshman, has been nothing but spectacular for someone his age. And here he comes. He's shown that he's still got the speed to contend with the lead, to contend with the front runners in a top-level category. Matthias Taub is really pushing to keep up with Adrian Devereaux, as you see, but he's pushing way too hard now. Taub went off the track, nearly threw it a wall away. But now his teammates got a run on him. But Taub does not want to give Arto Kekin in the spot. They're teammates. No team orders over there, clearly as uh, Arjo Kakinen is really going to have to work over Taub to get the spot. Unsurprisingly, the Togliatti is the first retirement of the race. The Togliatti's uh, have a reputation for very poor reliability, and, well, this is not really a surprise to anyone who's been following this series for a long time. Anyway, 
Back up at back up front, Adrian Devereaux is extending his lead. We're eight laps in, up 39, and uh, Devereaux really pulled out a huge lead here. He's got a pretty big cushion now, so he could probably afford to start saving fuel because uh, there are a lot of teams that think uh, you can do this race on one stop if you're lucky. However, lucky is the key word here. As he, uh, Adrian Devereaux, laps Cody Keaton for the first time on lap nine. Oh boy, a 39 lap race. Here is Cody Keaton demonstrating a, um, well, he's doing a, maybe he's got a rally career. Maybe he likes those sand pits, but, um, oh, that's a unique way to let the leaders by. Uh, we're being told that he did that in order to let the leaders go by, but the officials were not very impressed with that. But given the way that section of corners is laid out, that's just a completely mindless thing to do because you can come flying back on the track and just spear the leaders like that. He's a little bit more gracious right now than he was in Victoria, but he's way slower than he was at Victoria. Uh, I think Tutino tightened that car up so that he wouldn't spin out and look like a complete fool, but he's managed to do that anyway, regardless of that. But uh, Cody Keaton, car number 42, I think should probably stick to uh, engineering because I don't think he's, he's well, way, way out of his depth right now. Anyway, Leonid Roderick and Melanie Cleveno are now battling for 8th place. Roderick, car four, will be moving over to Volpe next year. This track, very bumpy over there, as you can see. Melanie Cleveno, the Swiss driver, is driving for her career, basically. She doesn't have a regular ride anywhere lined up. But now we've got another battle for second, coming back up between Arto Kekin and Michael Sykes. Whoa, Arto slides wide. And now Michael Sykes is going to have the run on the inside. He's going to take it from Kekkinen. Looks like, uh, uh, rather, that was for third place, because Taub is clearly still up there. Anyway. Uh, Sykes, he goes up to third. Savaral down to fourth, and Arto Kekkonen all the way back to fifth. Peter Short, we're back here, the four-time world champion in the Black Diamond racing car. They haven't been having a really good... Whoa! Peter Short off the track there. Um, he's back in 27th. He's obviously going to drop a bit further back. Lewis Kingston, the 17 car, is going to go a lap down. I think that might have been a little more than just a puncture for that 17 car because he's way, way off the pace. About as fast, he's still faster than Cody Keaton, and uh, he's going faster than Cody Keaton is, and he has mechanical problems, apparently. Uh, here is Melanie Cleveno versus Leonid Roderick, round two. And here we go, uh, Roderick and Cleveno have been really making a good show back here. Uh, the Swiss driver, Cleveno, driving for a career. She has no uh, regular ride lined up, as I mentioned. Roderick going to Volpe. Lewis Kingston, that 17 car, well, he's in trouble again. He, uh, he slow, brings that, he's slowing down, but... Oh, he gave the leaders a lot of room to go on the right side, but they all got jammed up behind him. Kingston tried to be courteous, but, uh, well, at the same time, that just created a bit of a jam up here. As you see, he gave them space, gave the leaders room, uh, because he didn't want to be on the inside there, which is uh, the right thing to do. But at the same time, he just it just created this jam up here between Taub, Savaral, and Kekkonen, who goes way out wide. Savaral, though, is going to take over second. Kekkonen is going to challenge his teammate Tao, but he's going to try to go up to third as Savarol. we got Hot as Walter cars, one and two. Yulina Sova in uh, car number eight is going to go out of the race on lap 14. Nasova, car number eight, uh, rather unfortunate because Nasova had been running up in sixth place. So heartbreaker for the Cats of team and for Yulina Sova. Cody Keaton being a bit of a nuisance. This is Dale Roswell we're looking at. Roswell gives him a bit of intimidation right there. Bumps the 42 car out of the way. That's his teammate, Peter Short, in the 19 car. Roswell and Short are having a pretty good battle with each other. However, they're both way back. Black Diamond Racing's been having a miserable weekend. Marcus Leonard in on lap 15. Kevin Dwyer in on lap 15. And uh, let's see if anyone else hits the pit lane. Ah, there's Trevin Terrell in on lap 15. That's a bit early to make it uh, on one stop. So it looks like these cars are all planning a two-stop strategy along with Zach Duff, Anthony Griffith. Here's the lead that Adrian Devereaux has, because now he just put Duff a lap down. He's going to put Griffith, Anthony Griffith, in car 29 a lap down as well. And uh, this is, uh, we're not quite at halfway yet, so Adrian Devereaux is really, really uh, pulling out a huge lead right now. He's uh, getting in some very, very quick laps on low fuel. Trevin Terrell in the 50 car is uh, going a lap down. And what was he doing? Looks like he got in the rumble strips, and I think he must have gotten sideways a bit. And he got punted by Savaral in the sand pit. Uh, I didn't hear any commentary from that uh, over the 50 team radio. Ben Atkins in on lap 17 from 19th place. Adrian Devereaux still has not come in yet. So I believe that the Hodges Walter boys, uh, at least for the number one team, are planning on a one stop. Cody Keaton getting in the way, uh, really getting in the way. 
I don't think Devereaux is going to handle that too well, and I think he might have shot him the bird as, Dev as he went by him. But uh, Adrian Devereaux, car number one, and he's definitely going for a one-stop if he's staying out this long. Packer Carroll is up to 10th place. He's fighting Chris. He's trying to fight Chris Johns for 9th. I wonder what Packer Carroll could do if he didn't have, uh, well, issues in qualifying. Self-inflicted issues in qualifying, I should note. Hmm. Anyway, Carroll's still doing a pretty good job right now despite all those problems in qualifying. He's trying to make up for it the best he can. Adrian Devereaux is in on lap, is going to come in on lap 19. I believe he can do this race on one stop. And I think everyone else that comes in on lap 19 can also do this race on one stop. Luciano stays out an extra lap. Savarol looks like he's done a better job at saving fuel than Devereaux has. Talbin on lap 19. Uh, I think I see Leonid Roderick in. Artu Kekkonen in. Uh, Melanie Cleveno in. Michael Sykes in. I think that's... Uh, no, it's not Leonard. Then who is that? That is Henton in. Car number six. There we go. Henton's crew, the uh, the number six Volpe team, uh, looks like they didn't have a really good pit stop. They blew that one apparently. And from the looks of things, Arto Kekkonen's team did likewise. And the number the uh, number nine Gessler. This has actually bunched up the pack quite a bit. Uh, Adrian Devereaux does not have as big of a lead as he did before. Savaral into the pits in car number three. The Brazilian driver has been having a very strong run today. Despite Luciano Savaral staying out an extra lap in order to gain some time on him, Adrian Devereaux still holds the lead of the race. The Frenchman is on the top of his game, and so is the Haas manufacturing team that have gotten Adrian Devereaux out with a pretty commanding lead. Devereaux's big lead actually gave him a bit of a cushion just in case the pit crew would actually make a mistake. He would have a pretty good shot at hanging on to the lead. Matthias Taub and Luciano Sauber all sit second and third. Taub doing a pretty good job at holding off the three car. Looks like the Gessler team on Taub was a little better than Sauber in the pits. And Taub actually gained a little bit on Devereaux. Back here with Cody Keaton. Oh, he's at it again, isn't he? This is going to might have to call that Keaton corner over there. As here he comes. Oh, he just hit the side of his teammate. He just came back on the track and hit Trevin Terrell. What a fool. What was Keaton thinking when he did that? You don't, do not, do not crash into your teammate under any circumstances. That does not tend to sit well with any car owners. There's Trevin Terrell, who had absolutely no idea Keaton was coming back on the track. And I don't even know what Keaton was thinking when he tried to merge over there. That was, uh, that was just one of the most dangerous things I've seen, just in general. Kevin Dwyer has set the third fastest lap of the race, but uh, it's pretty clear that the pit crew has let him down once again because he's back in 16th place when he's got a car that could easily contend for a top five. The 72 car is absolutely flying at the moment. He's cutting through some of the slower cars like they're not even there, but Kevin Dwyer's got a huge uphill battle ahead of him in that uh, 72 car, and that's a shame because... Uh, well, he's got a great bit of talent, but it's just not, he's just not been able to show it due to uh, circumstances out of his control. The Flash Racing team also didn't really have a great pit work, but both these cars are, like Kevin Dwyer, on the move. Leonard Rauder attacking his future teammate, Packer Carroll, in the uh, number two Volpe. Roderick and Carroll doing battle here, but Roderick clears Carroll as Carroll almost slides it off the course, goes a bit wide. Roderick takes position, and Michael Sykes looks like he's going to follow suit. Leonard Roderick, number four, is moving through the field. Or, uh, looking here at Chris Johans, who I think was the big winner in that pit cycle. Uh, Johans is currently running in fourth place, but he's got Arto Kakinen challenging him. Oh, Arto made a pretty aggressive move there, and Johans did not uh, blink from that. He's defending that one, but Arto Kakinen is looks like he's going to have the spot. Kakinen got a better run uh, off that slower section, and Arto Kakinen is going to take over fourth. Uh, Kakanen's pushing very, very hard, but he doesn't want to, uh, doesn't look like he's concerned himself with catching Adrian Devereaux in the one car. Looks like he's more concerned about catching his team, uh, his teammate Matthias Taub and Luciano Savaral. Matthias Taub has now encountered the, uh, Tutino of Cody Keaton, and this can only mean, uh, more fun and games with Cody Keaton, who, uh, well, he's already been invited to the steward's office. I really don't, won't be surprised if this is the last we ever see of him in a Masters, uh, Master Cup Series car for some time, anyway. If we look at the side of Cody Keaton, who you can tell from this camera is all over the place. Almost wipes Taub out there. Almost gets into the side of him. And I think Taub is going to be grateful to get away from that 42 car. Dale Roswell, the 22 car, made an unscheduled pit stop in the 22 car. So Roswell, oh, uh, Cody Keaton landscaping in the background there. But um, 
Roswell, this 22 car, the Freedom for Palestine entry, has not been having a very good weekend, as I mentioned already, and looks like things are just getting worse. We're not sure what Dale Roswell's got in store for him next uh, for next year. However, I wouldn't entirely be surprised if an Independence Trophy entry is on the cards, because uh, he's been talking to uh, an unknown team with a reportedly very experimental car. I'll have to wait and see what that is. Uh, anyway, here's Cody Keaton. Uh, more landscaping, and uh, we're gonna have to repaint some more walls here because Cody Keaton's gonna be hitting half of them. Oh my, what is he doing out there? <laughs> so. Clearly something has gone horribly wrong, and I don't know why he hasn't been pulled off the course, but this is really getting out of hand right now. You can tell Scott Bates, that 88 car, does not want anything to do with him. Finally, Cody Keaton gets enough sense and gets called into the pits by the officials. However, the team unfortunately sends him back out. Kevin Dwyer in car number 72 is going to come in for his uh, final pit stop right about now, and there he, here he comes. That's a scheduled stop, but um, it's a two-stop strategy, which I'm not entirely sure is going to work unless all the one, all the cars that are planning on one stop and run out of fuel. We're back up to 13th place as uh, Mika Pasadena is trying to show off in the Majestic Motorsports gas near. Lynx is buying this team out for next season, and they're gonna, probably going to put two female drivers in here, which means uh, no room in the end for uh, Mika Pasadena, unfortunately. And I think that's a bit of a travesty, because Pasadena has actually done quite a bit in this Majestic Motorsports car, even though the uh, results don't always show it. Zach Duff, car number five, the Xenos, is out from 23rd place. Uh, he's not really been having a very good weekend. Marcus Leonard has easily had the better of him this weekend. And uh, this is just going to be the end of what's been a pretty miserable weekend for Duff and that five team. Leonard Roderick is up here in car number four, running behind his teammate Michael Sykes, but trying to catch up. However, Roderick might have to concern himself with that blue and black six car pretty soon. That's Davina Henton uh, coming up on him. That uh, blue and yellow car in front of him is his teammate, Michael Sykes. Roderick in that the number four car running very well. Um, Marcus Leonard is two stopping, it looks like, as he brings the triple nine Xenos into the pits. However, I'm st I still have doubts whether or not two stopping is actually the way to go because I think everyone that is going to do a one-stop here. You see Ben Atkins is coming in as well. I think everyone that's one-stopping is probably going to have a huge advantage. Now, Mika Pasanen has got a challenger in the form of Ian Cooper, and uh, Ian Cooper is usually is usually one of those guys who, once he sees a hole, he goes for it, whether or not it closes up in, uh, in half uh, before the break zone or not. But that 777 car is really working over Mika Pasanen, and Pasanen's trying to make Cooper's life miserable, but... Uh, that triple seven car, I think, is faster. He's Pasen is able to hold him off there in those lack section, section of corners, which I think is a pretty impressive job at defending, to be quite honest. Here comes the triple seven Lysander EFR journey, though. He's being very, very aggressive, and Cooper sliding that thing around just a little bit. Pasen goes a bit wide, but, and now Cooper hard on the brakes just to hold off, just to make sure he has the spot for Mika Pasen, and Scott Bates is going to challenge as well. So. Looks like Ian Cooper's aggressive driving has not only helped him out, but that's going to help out his teammate. That's some good teamwork there by the EFR boys. And uh, I want to talk about two guys that have done a pretty good job. I didn't look no further than these two guys, especially Scott Bates, who uh, was an outside championship contender, but I think at this point uh, he's going to need a miracle to catch up in the championship if he's going to win it. Anyway, back up with Adrian Devereaux out in the lead. As you see, there's not really anyone around him. Uh, there's a couple lap cars behind him. That's... Uh, and there's got a clean track in front of him for the most part, so car number one really having a lonely race out there. Charlie Waters is, is uh, going to pit from 21st place. He's been really pretty solid all day, but uh, like Kevin Dwyer, Bart Sandy uh, in the 92 car, who's also just come into the pits, and to Ben Atkins, uh, strategy's really hurting him. Also, Yamino Tenchi, the 25 car is in. Kurt Pliskin, the 16 car is, uh, is also pitting. And as you can see, that's Adrian Devereaux going by, meaning Pliskin is a lap down. Liskin's actually in the points right now, but um, Adrian Dever, I believe, is actually going to catch one or two of the one-stoppers, so this could be a very interesting day indeed. A lot of cars into the pits for uh, fuel concerns. I think that uh, most people don't, uh, don't think that the uh, leaders can make it the whole way on fuel. Scott Stoidler in the 08 car is one of the only cars in the back of the field that's opting to one-stop, which I think is a little strange. He's back in 18th place, but he's been going so slowly that a one-stop is feasible, but there's a lot of cars doing two-stoppers that are in front of him, so I think he's definitely going to have to pick it up over there. 
Here's uh, Michael Sykes at 44. Oh, no! Oh, no! Michael Sykes has just gotten run off the road by none other than Diane, I mean, Cody Keaton over there in the uh, 42 car. Michael Sykes. Oh, man, that's no doubt. Michael Sykes is going to be giving a long stream of expletives on the radio. He was in sixth place, but that's a huge, huge travesty for him to be taken into the wall by Cody Keaton in the 42 car. I, oh, what was he, what was Keaton thinking? Oh, oh, I see. Okay, so this one's a bit more believable. Looks like Keaton straddled the rumble strips over there, and that's what got the car sideways, and got, and Sykes is just in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's probably the most believable of Keaton's errors that he's made today. I can't really explain the rest of them. Kevin Dwyer is uh, the complete opposite of Cody Keaton uh, so far today. Uh, when it comes to being lapped, this is, uh, I believe, the second time that the 72 car is being put a lap down. As you can see, Dwyer's giving De is the leader, Adrian Devereaux, plenty of room to go by. But uh, Kevin Dwyer's day is just, uh, he's having more problems than just a bad strategy. He's all the way back in 29th, and you can tell just from uh, how fast Adrian Devereaux is able to pull away from him. There's clearly uh, some trouble there with the 72 car. Luciano Salveral back here with car number three as he's beginning to navigate traffic. That's Kurt Flisk in the 16, Blake Camphausen in the 15. Uh, Salveral up in third. He's being pretty aggressive with the traffic, though, going three wide. Uh, they Thankfully, they give him the space. They don't cause a big crash over there. Uh, but Luciano Salveral is really hunting down Matthias Tau. He wants that second place. The Brazilian driver is really, really going for it right now. Davina Henson in car number six is, uh, well, not as patient with, the, with some of the tra with some of the traffic today. And here's proof, proof positive. Oh, but Blake Camphausen, she just punted off the road. He was in the points, actually. Camphausen was running in 20th place. So you can bet the stewards are going to look into that one. What? What? A time penalty for Henton? I do not understand that at all. You see, here's Camphausen. Just comes, he just cuts off Henton. I don't see how that's Henton's fault when the 15 car just cuts him off, cuts her off like that. Why Why would you give Henton a time penalty for that? She had nowhere to go but into the back of the 15 car, especially when he's driving like that. The two masters of disaster from earlier in the season, uh, Anthony Griffith and Charlie Waters, are actually able to race very cleanly with each other. They're having a battle for position for, I believe, 21st place right now. But there's still a couple... Oh, Charlie Waters off the road. And, uh, well, I just jinxed that one. But uh, there's still a couple cars in front of them that are going to need a pit before the end of the race because they are on a two-stop strategy. Here it is again. We're going to watch Charlie Waters. He's side-by-side -side with the 29 car. And it looks like he's just racing hard with that 29 car. And he just went a little too hard, got out of the grass, and just got way out of shape. Well, anyway. Ah, justice has finally been served. Henson's time penalty has been rescinded, but she's being held up by the 19 car, Peter Short, who I think anticipated Henson to go by on the other side. However, Henson... Oh, Michael Sykes is coming. Henson's going to have to give that spot up to Sykes in the 44. Sykes using Peter Short as a pick to get around Davina Henson. That's some brilliant driving by the Welshman. And Henson uh, now is going to try to get 7th place back, but there's not a whole lot of time she's going to have left to do that. Michael Sykes is a very, very canny driver. He is all, he is very, very sharp, and his racecraft skills are very good as well. Roderick and Chris Johans are doing battle with two laps to go. Leonid Roderick on the inside of Johans. I think Roderick is going to take the spot as you get a look at the Schaefer Grip livery. That's on car number 64 of Chris Johans, the Tremwell. As now Roderick has caught up to Charlie Waters in the 30. Adrian Devereaux, however, is going to be able to make the fuel last. And Adrian Devereaux, coming off the final corner, is going to make the make his fuel last on one stop and take home win number five of the season. Chris Johans in car number 64, Leonid Roderick and Arto Kekinen all ran out of fuel on the cooldown lap. So that just shows you how close the leaders were on fuel. Every single car that finished on the lead lap, one stopped. Everyone that dropped off the lead lap, two stopped or in some cases, three stopped. However, those cars are having mechanical problems anyway. Matthias Staub was able to hold off Luciano Savaral, but they were almost 15 seconds behind Adrian Devereaux at the end of the race. So Devereaux clearly put on a clinic today. And, uh, well, if this doesn't look like a championship run from Devereaux, then, uh, well, I don't know what is. 
Luciano Savarol, Leonid Roderick, and Arto Kekkonen all managed to finish inside the top five, however, so Devera won't be exactly pulling a huge lead anytime soon. Chris Johans and Michael Seitzel both had very good runs. The two Volpe drivers are pretty close to the end of the race. Melanie Cleveno, car number 74, deserves a round of applause for a solid drive. Ian Cooper, Scott Bates both did very well. Martinez and Pasanen both deserve a round of applause as well because both of them are looking for a drive next year. Uh, Scott Stoidler in car number 08 uh, just barely stayed on the lead lap at the end of the race. Kevin Dwyer and Zelda Ashby did a great job uh, uh, recovering from, uh, all the ground that they lost earlier. Uh, same can be said for Kurt Pliskin, Yamino Tenchi, and Peter Short. Despite a bit of a messy start to the race, came home with a very respectable 20th. The fastest lap of the race was set by Adrian Devereaux on the very last lap, and he was well over half a second quicker than the rest of the field had gone the whole race. Wow. Let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship leaving Queensland and as we head into Brazil. Devereaux has taken the lead back five points over on Arto Kakanen, 25 on his teammate Luciano Savaral, and Leonid Roderick fourth, 39 behind. Remember, right after Brazil, Roderick will go to New York to run uh, that race of, over there in the middle of October, and Luciano Savaral, well, he's got a bit of work to do, and he'll definitely be energized in front of the home crowd. Davina Hankton has gotten back up into the top 10 in points, as has Matthias Taub in the uh, number 10 car. Lewis Kinks and Yuli Nasova have both dropped out of uh, the top 10 after both of them failed to finish. Martinez making some headway in the 7 car. And Melanie Cleveno has jumped into the top 20 in the championship, despite missing well over half the season. Cleveno will not be running Brazil, as I said earlier. But either Bobby Porto or Ethan Everett will be in that 74 car for Brazil. I'm not entirely sure which one of them though. And now let's have a look at the Independence Trophy standings as they come into Brazil. You'll now notice that Ben Atkins has not scored enough points to take over the Independence Trophy. His Independence Trophy run unfortunately grinds to a halt. And now we're going to have to see if some of the other heavy hitters that are still left, such as Gaspar de Souza, can make a run at the Independence Trophy for this year.